Hey everyone and welcome back to another GTA Online video. Today I'm bringing you guys a more in-depth tutorial on shunt hopping. Judging from the comment section, a lot of you guys seem to be having trouble keeping the car straight to keep flying through the air. So I'm going to be giving you guys some tips and tricks in order to shunt hop better and hopefully after you watch this video you'll be able to get the hang of it a bit easier. The major things I want to go over today are keeping overall control of the car, slowing down, speeding up, and turning. And then after all that I'll have some tips on a few specific vehicles because a couple of them have some characteristics that make it harder to pull this off with them. For a majority of this tutorial I'll be using the ZR380, but 80% of the Arena War vehicles have roughly the same handling when it comes to shunt hopping, so once you learn what I'm about to show you, you'll be able to apply it to any car you want, aside from the two outliers which I'll talk about later. If you want to get a really long flight going, you need to first get a good amount of speed. One of the reasons I like the ZR380 for this is because it's the fastest car that can shunt hop as of now. It can get up to speed pretty fast, so you need to do less adjusting later on to get the speed. After the initial jump, you then need to tilt your car to the side and then use the shunt boost. To get the initial tilt down, it's really just a matter of practice knowing when to stop tilting your analog stick so that the car is straight. After this initial jump though is where a lot of you guys said that you had problems keeping the car tilted on its side after the first shunt boost. The good news is that there is a very easy way to keep your car in control the way you want to using the handbrake. The game doesn't explain this very well, but if you're ever in a situation where your car is in the air, if you don't want to flip over you can hold the handbrake and then turn the analog stick to turn it around its axis to make minor adjustments in the way that the car is facing rather than flipping it around. This is a very useful tip not only for shunt hopping, but for stunt racing too. For shunt hopping purposes, this is the key to pretty much everything I'm about to show you. Let's restart the tutorial showcasing the handbrake control this time. Step 1 is to gain some speed, then jump, tilt the car on its side, jump again, then before the third jump you want to make some adjustments using the handbrake controls. An important thing to note about the handbrake is that you can't adjust your car using it if it's tilted at 90 degrees. So what you have to do is slightly tilt the car to the right like I'm doing right now before making your adjustment, then tilt it back before hitting the next jump. And ideally you want to do this as needed before every consecutive jump to keep the chain going. Now what are these adjustments that I'm talking about? What do I mean by adjusting the vehicle before using the shunt boost? Well, it's really just basic physics. There are two adjustments that you can make that have variable effects depending on how much you tilt the car. The first one I'll go over is the forward momentum gain. You'll want to use this one when you notice your car is starting to lose speed during the flight. To do it, you slightly tilt your car to the right, hold handbrake, and then slightly tilt your analog stick to the left and then back to the right a little bit to stop it from turning too much. This will bring the front end of the car closer to the ground. After adjusting it, let go of the handbrake and then use the shunt boost. Since the side of your car is facing forward more than usual, the shunt boost is going to propel you forward at the cost of some height, thus gaining forward momentum. The other adjustment is the complete opposite. Say you want to slow down in the air to try to land somewhere. You want to do everything the same as the previous adjustment, except this time you tilt the analog stick to the right before releasing the handbrake and shunt boosting. In this case, the side of the car is facing straight up or behind you, and the shunt boost will propel you in the other direction tad, causing you to lose speed in the air because you're going against your momentum. I know this probably sounds really confusing listening to me explain it, but when you're actually doing it I think it's much easier to get the hang of. And obviously it's going to require some practice and muscle memory to get good at. You're probably not going to be very good at it just starting out. Moving on to the next technique, turning. Turning I think is a lot easier to do than adjusting the car because it doesn't require the handbrake. To turn you simply need to tilt the car to the right before using the shunt boost and it'll turn you to the right more and more with each consecutive shunt boost. If you turn the vehicle with too much of an angle, you're going to lose all of your momentum and fall straight down, so you kind of have to get a feel of how much speed you have as you turn. You might have to make some adjustments during the turn in order to stay in the air. With all that said, let's go over the two outliers that I briefly mentioned at the beginning of the video, the Scarab and the Cerberus. These two vehicles are a pain to shunt hop with, but if you're inclined to do so, here are some tips. With the Cerberus, you have to make adjustments right off of the first jump because the center of gravity is in the back of the vehicle where the tanker is, so it leans backward when it's airborne. And once you do get it up in the air, you have to tilt it to the right after every single time you jump because the tanker will lean down to the left every time you shunt hop. So if you want to keep it straight to keep it going, then just make sure to adjust it every time. This Scarab, in my opinion, is the best vehicle to shunt hop with because its shunt boost is the strongest one you can get. However, it is the hardest one to keep tilted because it'll randomly turn itself upright out of your control sometimes, which ruins the whole flight. 
The best way I've found to avoid this is just to make sure that it stays at a good angle all the time. If it gets too far upright, that's when it seems to flatten out, I've noticed, but it's not a guarantee it's going to happen from time to time. And that is the shunt hopping technique fully explained. I hope I was able to help out some of you who were having trouble. I tried to go over everything as best as I could, but in general, it's just not an easy thing to pull off and master, so it required a lot of in-depth explaining. If you guys enjoyed the video or found it helpful, feel free to leave a like, as well as subscribe to my channel for more guide and PvP-related content. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.